Hello Citrus fans! In the previous Citrus video and also the first video of our Citrus series, we unboxed and looked at the budwood that we selected and received from the Citrus Clonal Protection Program. This program is administered by the University of California at Riverside. Riverside, California is where the global citrus industry took off and that's why the university there is still doing a lot of research to this day. They're doing very important work these days because of a citrus disease, a terminal citrus disease called HLB and they're working feverishly to find a cure. Um, because of it we're seeing a lot of quarantine and here in LA County we have a citrus quarantine where only citrus can come in and it can't leave the county. That's also why it's very important that we get registered budwood, budwood that is um, been tested and certified to not contain this disease because if we were to get one that's diseased um, and bring it to our garden here we're going to spread it not only from these plants but to our neighbors and kind of uh, exacerbate the pro problem. This episode is a long overdue update because after the first episode and looking at the budwood I went ahead and grafted um, the buds onto three trees and today is a report on how they're doing. Uh, it's also long overdue because we're supposed to have uh, trimmed off some of the uh, growth here. So we'll do that after looking at how they are doing and talking about them a little bit. This is going to be the technical part of our episode today where we talk about what kind of grafting work has been done to what tree. We have three trees and two were purchased from the nursery. The third one is a seed grown tree that was grown by my brother. We believe it's a pomelo. Unfortunately, the tea bud that we did here didn't work out. And it could be that it's because I selected a very large bud. I was curious to know if uh, the large buds work better than the small buds or vice versa. In hindsight, I should have grafted another one down here um, and at least have something to eliminate as a pop probable cause. I'm not sure if it's because it's a large bud or if it's because the rootstock's not compatible or if uh, something else is going on. What we do have success with is this cleft graph on this tree here and also the bud graph that's on this tree here. Between the two types of grafting techniques, the bud graph is going to be the most easiest graph and great for beginners. This cleft graph is a little bit more tricky because you have to line up the cambium just right. If you miss the alignment, this is not going to work. The tree will not, this um, scion will not grow. Um, there are pros and cons to these two grafting techniques and I'll get into it now. From here, what you do with a T-bud graph or bud graph is you make a slit into the base of the tree, the rootstock of the tree, and you insert a little bud onto there and you wrap it up with paraffin film to protect it and also to keep the moisture in. Once the tree has healed and scar tissue forms around the wound, you can remove the paraffin film and you'll need to uh, send a signal to the tree to start pushing energy to the bud. And there's a phenomenon called atypical dominance where a tree will not grow new, um, will not make new growth anywhere that's down below because it doesn't really make sense. It wants to make growth at the top where the sun is. So what you have to do is you have to cut the tree uh, halfway and bend it over. So that's why we have this tree uh, in the way it is. So once that's done, the tree will begin to push energy to the bud. If you do it successfully, um, you'll see bud growth. If you do it unsuccessfully, you'll see something like this on this tree where the bud it dried out. It's completely dry. So here it is. At the end of the episode today, we need to do the next step and that's to remove this entirely. So we're going to snip this off and we're going to clean it up 
um, a little bit. On this tree here, we have the cleft graph, and it's basically a grafting technique where you um, cut the branch, you make a, sl a slit into it, and then you, you make a special kind of cut on the scion, and you slide it in there, and because of the way the slit works, it uses its own um, compression to keep the the scion wood on there, and it'll form scar tissue around it. And once once it's um, made the connection, it'll naturally push out growth to, um, from the buds. So we had paraffin film wrapped from where the the graph meets the tree. We wrapped the entire thing up with paraffin film to keep the moisture in because we don't want this, this stick or this scion to dry out before it gets a chance to push out the buds. So between the two techniques, um, the, the bud wood, the bud graph, while it's easy, you're not gonna be able to do something um, like a multi-graph, so basically you're not going to be able to um, do well, you're not going to be able to have two types of citrus onto one tree. We have a Eureka Lime, or Eureka Lemon, now with this blood orange here. This is the uh, bah Bahabza blood orange. So we have a Bahabza blood orange grafted onto a Eureka um, scion that is on top of a root stock so so that's that's how it is uh, working on this tree so um, I want to backtrack real quick so after so basically when you have your your um, bud in there and it and you unwrap the paraffin film it'll look like something like this as you can see here on this graft here, on this T-bud graft, which I grafted as a backup in case our cleft graft above didn't work. Um, if it didn't work, then I would have done the cutting this in half and then pushing it over and having this bud here push out new growth. So here's an illustration of a bud that's still alive. It's green there and also illustration of why it's not pushing out growth because of atypical dominance so the tree doesn't doesn't know to push out growth until you chop it in half um so that's uh that's what we have here so real quick we have this is a california rojo grafted onto a rootstock here and this was a car car orange grafted onto Rootstock. So now we have the um, the California Rojo, which is the sister to the Car Car Orange, and you probably know of this orange because it's very popular these days. You'll find it at the supermarket. Um, but the California Rojo is one that you're not likely to find, and not likely to find at the nursery, along with this Bohobza Blood Orange. We tried to graph a mellow gold. Uh, uh, grapefruit on here but that didn't work. The Mellow Go is the sister to the Oro Blanco. It is a performer for warm weather. The Oro Blanco is one that grows in cooler weather so that one is more popular um, because it's got more tolerance but unfortunately we didn't get this to work this time. Uh, we have Budwood still and we'll try to try it again. Hopefully there will be something to report in the future. So that's the technical part of our grafting. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just cut this all off and well, at least this tree, shape it properly. Before I cut this, there was a detail about this particular bud and its growth that I forgot to mention. It was a surprise to find that it had pushed out two stems. So we remove one and we'll let this become its own tree. So when it's when it eventually grows, it'll grow into one tree. So we're going to do a rough cut here. We're going to remove this car car portion of the tree. And um, we're going to then saw this, this part off. And we'll make another rough cut. And we'll 
saw it off and let this be its own tree. So let's get it as close to the to the butt as possible. Okay. We want to be careful not to damage this tree now. Get in there with the saw and make a really clean cut here. Generally, what you want to do is you want to use a 45 degree angle because that way if there's water, it actually runs off. The angle is just for the water to run off the tree, that portion of the wound. If I had a better saw, this would go a lot quicker. So we removed the growth from this tree and it's going to be happy now. Something that we could have done a few weeks ago, but I think it's more fun to do it with you here in the greenhouse. On this tree, we have uh, the Bahubza blood orange on top. And then down below here is a Eureka lemon. The original plan was to have this be a single variety, but uh, why not have a multi-variety tree? And that's gonna be really cool. We don't have a Eureka lemon. So this is gonna be really cool to see. Our last tree, we have um, also removed the portion of the tree that we pushed over and we're going to allow this portion to grow and maybe we'll graft something onto it at a later time. At the end of the, this video, there's going to be some montages. Uh, the first montage is going to be the actual graft work that we did on, on um, some of these trees along with some practice work. So if you're um, interested in grafting make sure you practice just like anything in life make sure you practice before you do the actual thing because um, there's always something to figure out on the fly and you'll you'll uh, be more successful after a little bit of practice uh, then after that montage are some pictures of um, the growth from these two trees uh, after the grafting and uh, with with that we're gonna end our episode today Thanks for coming out and watching this one. It's a little bit more technical and thanks for watching and your interest in citrus. They're very exciting types of plants for me and I try to collect as many as I can given the space and other resources available. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how they grow and maybe in a year or two we get to taste the, the fruit off of these trees. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next citrus episode uh, where we look at some other citrus trees and how they're growing.